This paper is um, talking about lenses as a data structure, but in Scala programming language. Um, so it's specific to that language. Um, tonight I'm going to be using Haskell. I hope that's okay. Um, mostly because um, I learned how to use LaTeX to write my slides. Okay, so, uh, all right, so, um, well, has anyone not heard of lens at all? The word just makes no sense. So, mm, okay, all right, so I'll give you a sort of a brief introduction before we talk about the, the, um, the old ego cup there. Um, a lens is just a data structure. Um, it comes in a variety of forms. The one I'm going to be talking about tonight is the asymmetric lens. Um, it's called asymmetric because uh, it, uh, it, it operates on a target object to, to, a, um, to a result and there's not necessarily a way to get back. So that's what makes it asymmetric. Um, but as a data structure, it's really simple. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to divide the question um, into two. The question is, what is a lens? Um, it's a simple question. I'm going to tell you in five or ten minutes. It's pretty easy. And then I'm going to explore some of the implications of, of this uh, data structure. So, um, and another kind of, a different way of saying that is, um, so uh, to, to say some gobbledygook stuff, is that a lens is the coalgebra for the co-state co-minor. Okay, and uh, I, I, I say this not to use um, uh, scary words, but because that statement is really quite concise, and um, there's sort of nothing more to be said now. We can sort of go home, but except for the fact that no, no one knows what that means. So um, if you can kind of imagine, like I take this statement and I say, and it has all these implications because of this fact. Um, I'm not going to tell you about the fact. I'm just going to start talking about the implications, right? Because they're kind of the um, they're more interesting. Um, but this is sort of like sort of encapsulates the whole idea. Um, so if you do know what that means, well, see you later, right? There's nothing more to say. Um, so, um, so again, I'm using Haskell. Is, is, does, can anyone not read that code? Yeah, there you go. So everyone can read that code? Cool. So it's just, um, I'm just going to use this example to explain the concept tonight. This is a, this is a simple uh, record data type. A person has a name and address, and an address has a uh, strict of it. Okay, we're reasonably familiar with these kind of things. Um, uh, probably while you were working away today, you probably had setters on these things, right? Set suburbs, and this doesn't happen in Haskell. Um, when we set the suburb on an address, we get back a new address. Functional programming, right? So, <clears throat> um, yeah, I press that once. Okay. Um, so, who, who kind of aims for um, immutable objects? You know, in their Java or whatever, or C sharp, right? So I'm going to I'm going to try to appeal to a problem that you probably have, um, and uh, right. Um, in that, uh, you probably want to say modify the name of the immutable person object, right? Um, and so you end up with something like this. Um, this might be an interface over here, right? So you've got this method on the person, and it takes him what to do to the name to return a new name. So You've got this sort of modifier function here, and if you wanted to reverse it, you pass in reverse, and then the person, and you get back a new person with their name reversed. Not that you go around reversing people's names, but you get the point. So is that, so I'm going to start appealing a bit more, but does that kind of make sense so far? So um, the problem with this is that I have to write modify name, uh, what were the other three? Modify address, modify suburb, Street. I'm only up to three, right? Street. Sorry? Modify street. Street. What did I say? Street then suburb. Oh, street, yeah. So I've got to write one for every field, right? Um, and this kind of sucks balls. Right, so. Um, and we have to write other ones, right? We have to write this set name where we don't actually perform what we don't get. We don't look at the name to reverse it. We just sort of set it to a new one. Set this person's um, name to this string and get back a new person. I mean, to write one of those for each field. You've, have you, you know, if you're writing mutable objects in C sharp, you've probably done this, yeah? Well, I mean, I'm not meaning to pick on C sharp, but um, other things. And, and then, if you want to set the name and the address um, on the person, even though that's pretty much everything on the person, so might as well just get in the 
person, but um, you, you see the problem. Um, and then, if you want to set a person's suburb, because remember a person has an address and an address has a suburb, you, uh, you have to write, so I guess this is hassle record selection syntax, I don't know. Um, but the point is, is uh, this is like a big greater than sign. We've seen greater than sign code, see if we write immutable objects. No? Yeah? You, you see what I mean? <laughs> That's only two, right? If I did three, it sort of gets bigger and bigger. Um, <clears throat> So I, I'm, I'm saying it because I, you know, every now and then I, I, I wake up in the morning and in the inbox, <coughs> you know, I heard you know how to use lenses. Why is my sub code like a greater than symbol? Um, or, you know, it's worded something like this. So I'm hoping I've kind of um, got you a little bit hooked in terms of that's a problem you're familiar with and you've hit before. Um, so this is the really easy bit. What is a lens? It's just a pair of the getter and the setter on an immutable object. Can everyone see that right? So set A is the target object, B is the field that returns a new A, and get is given the target object, get the field out of it. So it's that simple. Um, and, and for example, the name lens um, would be uh, the person to a string. So that gives you the pair of the getter and the setter on the name of the person. So it really is that easy. Um, you know, there's a few footnotes to that, but if, if you've got that much, you, you're mostly there. <clears throat> okay. So um, the cool bit about this data structure is I can now write a modify function that runs on any lens. Okay. So if I've got a lens on the target A to the field B, and I write the modify on the field B, and then I can return a function that, given the target object, will modify in that way. So I now have a universally available modifier. I don't have to write one for every record field. Right, so Fred in the corner who's up to 110th one, screw that, all right? We're, we're going to use this. OK? <clears throat> um, so we now have got a universal modifier function. It can run on any lens. Um, but what about when we embed fields? Right, so um, what about when I want to modify the person's suburb? So if we go back to this code here, um, if I wanted to use this to modify a person's um, suburb, but, you know, I pretty much, I would, I would go, well, given the, a person to an address, and then in here, I go I have to write a function address to address. And then inside that address, I have to go and modify that address to suburb to return a new address. So, I'm only taking one little time, one little step. Um, so, <clears throat> you with me still? So, if you, if you do get a question, please stop me, all right? So, um, wrong way. So, so, are you saying that each of the fields would be a type of lens? So, the name would be a type of lens? Um, uh, 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 what was the start of that question? So I guess that's a crucial bit of information I'm trying to skip over is that um, in, in what I'm describing here, for, for every uh, field you have a value of this type. All right. So for the name field you have this lens. Um, the name's still a string though, Tony, is what? The name is still a string? And there's a lens for that name, for every attribute. Yeah, for every, a lens. For every attribute there is a lens, that's right. Um, but I, I, I want to de-emphasize that a little bit because there, there are lenses that, um, and quite useful ones, that don't correspond to a field, and I'll show you a few of those. But just sort of, in, in order to sort of give you a taste of a problem you might be familiar with, I'm going to use the, the idea that lenses correspond to fields. All right, so in this case, I'm talking about the lens, <coughs> the name lens. All right, so the name of a, of a, of a person. Um, <coughs> So, when we have embedded fields, okay. So, so since every uh, field has a lens, um, I think hopefully you would agree with me that they, the name lens will be a person to address, the target type is a person, the result is an address, 
the main lens, I could set a person's address and get a new person. I could also get a person's address. Um, and similarly for this other line of address, um, I could uh, get the address out, get a string, or I could set the string on the address and get a new address. So that, that's what a lens is. Um, and what I would like to do, so going back to this modify function, um, what I would like to do is I'd like to, if I want to set the person's suburb, I want to have a person string here, right? So, so that in here, I, you know, I do whatever I need to do to the, to the uh, suburb. So the question, how do I get down into the, into the embedded, you know, when a person has an address and an address has a suburb, how do I get down there is, is equivalent to this kind of question. Can I do this? If I have a lens from person to address and an address to string, can I get from person to string? Does this ring any bells for anybody? Function composition? Okay, so um, this, this idea of, um, so if I, if I just sort of substitute some names in here, so if I say this is A, B, B, C, A, C, right, has a name, okay? Now, name is a semi groupoid. Okay? So, a semi groupoid is uh, any value for semi there um, that, that gives rise to this operation such that operation is associative. Do we all remember what, does anyone not know what associative means? Makes total sense. Associativity, all done. Perfect. Okay? Um, So um, that's what a semi groupoid is. So, yeah. no questions at this point? Know what a semi groupoid is? What about a category? Because, like, we're 90% of the way. <laughs> I'm just checking. I'm just checking where I'm at here. So, um, I've got an example semi groupoid. This one. Yeah? Can everyone think of this semi groupoid? This is just function composition, right? So, if I go and if I whack this up there and replace semi with this, so that's obviously in prefix position there. Okay, so if I got a function a to d, a function b to c, can I get a function a to c in an associative way? Yes, that's function composition. Yeah? Cool, I see shaking heads and I see some confused heads. So. No questions at this point? Um, you don't have to worry too much about this one here. Do you want me to tell you what it is? I mean, it's, it's just another semi group. It's another way of composing. It's another data structure. But the most important one is this one here, this lens one. So lens is a semi group word, and this allows us to compose them. Okay, so if I've got a lens AB, a lens BC, I can get a lens AC. If a person has an address and an address has a suburb, I can get a person's suburb by composing those two lenses. Okay? Alright. Sweet. Because this allows us to compose to an arbitrary depth, right? Remember that we created any code? No, oh, no, no, we don't want that. What we really want to do is we want to take these two lenses here and compose them, because they're semi groupoids, for modifying parts in reverse. And now we can reverse a person's uh, so. Okay, so I, I get this question a lot. So I don't know if you guys have this question, but you know, I've got this really big immutable object graph. How do I go in there and Add a thousand dollars to my salary. How do I do this? All right. So if they're using variables, it's easy. You just go and hack their code, right? There'll be a very big security exploit. But if it's like this, you can pose lenses and get down there. You call modify whatever it is you need to do. Pass the operation. <laughs> oh yeah, you just going in and rob somebody. <laughs> Nice work. He, he, looks, he looks wealthy. <laughs> if you had an iPhone, you could be recording this with your stuff. Really? Thank you, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, seriously, no questions at this point? Okay. Oh, and, and by the way, so the example I've given you is like a, is a depth of two, right? So a person has an address and an address has a suburb. A suburb has a third character. A character has a fifth bit. Like I'm just getting a bit crazy here, but imagine you need to go and set the fifth bit on the person's addresses, suburbs. See where I'm going, right? You just compose. Tony, is the result of that that operation a lens? Uh, this.
this year. Yeah. Yeah. That is definitely a win. Yes. I can show it to you. How about I do that? Uh, can you read that? I can make it bigger. Are you laughing on the stream so soon? Yes. Um, so, where are we? We're right here. It's probably a little bit busy, isn't it? Um, so, the type of reverse. Ah, oh, sorry, the type of. Um, what are they called? Solid lens? Oh, there it is. Solid lens is a lens address string, like we said. Um, and the other one was an address string. Suburb lens, the address lens, and we've got composition, semi-group word composition. So if I pass in a lens address string and a lens address, sorry, a lens person address and a lens address string, I get back a lens person string. Okay? So which is to say that that statement is the same thing as saying if I pass in what do I say? A lens uh, person address. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with Haskell syntax, this thing takes two arguments and they're going to appear right there, so on either side of it. Um, so if I pass in the first argument there, that address lens and some you know, suburb lens, ask for the type of this thing, it's going to tell me that it is a lens person string, like, like we said. So the type inference are when substituted in person, address, address, string, person, string. Okay? So we now have that lens. Um, we go and have a look at a modifier. I think it was called. So now if I, if I take this one in here and I uh, pass it here, this becomes person string. I pass in a function string to string, such as reverse. And then I get back a function person to person. So then I pass in with the person and get him back with the, uh, the uh, suburb reverse. I can actually call that. Can we call this function? I don't have an example prepared, so mind my type errors. So, um, address lens, other lens, reverse. So now I'll, let's just see how I'm going. What's the score here? I'm good. Okay, so it's a function person to person. It's kind of wrapped around here, so person to person. Okay, so the person I pass in. I'm going to get back that new person with, uh, well, assuming this all works, I could just be completely bullshitting you all. But assuming this all works, I'll get back a person with a, uh, with a reverse suburb. So, I'll be talking you know what, I'm going to actually just remind myself of that. Alright, so person takes a string, which was uh, the name. It's true, it should be a typo. I agree. So, when you get to a horse, right, can't be a pain in your ass to get you to do like a really quick recap of what you've already done. So, that you can pick yourself. Um, 
Um, it's alright, AJ, I've got it on my iPhone. Have you seriously? Yeah. I don't know what the sound's like. Hey? It won't run on Windows. Who runs Windows? <laughs> no, do you seriously want me to go again, or can you sort of blue them together? Oh, you are actually recording. It is actually recording. I don't know what the sound quality is like. It could be atrocious. Uh, uh, what do you think? Just keep going. We'll keep going? Yep. Do some ADR, that'll be fine. Pardon? ADR. Record your voice. <laughs> Redub your voice. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a trouble with the audience. <laughs> So the answer to the question, if, if you were one of these people or whatever who has this question, so I know there are a lot of you who say, do email me, how do I go down the object graph and, and up, do an update or whatever it is, this will be my response to you. Okay, so we use a lens to do that. Okay, so here's the use case, as the example. And if, if I did really did need to go and modify a... Uh, the suburbs fifth character, I would then just compose again. Um, of course, that's a special type of lens because it might not have a fifth character. I'll get to that. So, um, I just want to give you another little piece of terminology. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're going to start looking at a few of the libraries. So, we've seen the modify function, um, and there's of course getting set as primitive functions on a lens. Um, but here's just a really trivial lens, right? And it's, it's I'll just call it the identity lens. It's just max a value input self. Um, its setter is you know, ignore its argument and then just return the, the, uh, the field that was set. <coughs> and then its getter is just return itself. Um, and the only reason, like I took you 90% of the way with the semi groupoid, right? I just want to take the next 10% and just say things that are a semi groupoid and map onto themselves are called categories. Yeah, real ones, like right? categories. So, just to recap on that, um, a semi group point is anything that go that composes a, a to b, b to c, and then a to, given a to c. And a category is a semi group point that has an identity, so it maps onto itself. So, if you ever see a diagram of categories, um, I'll draw it up for you, right? So, <coughs> um, they're often called morphisms. 